Hi there, and welcome to Find Your Voice. My name is Joe Crammond, and I'm the host of the show. And today we're delighted with a wonderful guest called Laura Silverstein. Uh, she's a relationship expert from Philadelphia, and she's an author of Love is an Action Verb. And also, Stop Wasting Time and Delight in Your Relationship. Uh, Laura, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. It's lovely to be here. The first question is a quick fire round, so we're just going to sort of go through this. So um, what does it say on your business card? Ah, well, there's sort of what does it officially say on my business card is certified couples therapist and founder and co-owner of Mainline Counseling Partners, which is a group psychotherapy practice in Philadelphia. But if you're thinking like what it, what does my business card say in terms of who I am now today, it's it's really more about, I think, share what couples therapists do behind the doors of sort of confidential couples therapy offices and share it with people who might not have access or, you know, might not need expert couples therapy, but just so that they can improve their relationships and have more love in their life. Yeah, it sounds wonderful. So were you the girl that people came to when they had problems then? They just wanted to have a, have a moan and a shoulder to cry on and you <laughs> yes. just take, took on everybody else's drama and stuff. Yeah. It's, yeah. Um, yeah, it's always been really comfortable for me. I'm interested mm. in that. I like real conversations. I've always yeah. liked authenticity. I don't like the small talk. Like that's never been me. So if somebody's upset, um, even as a young kid, that didn't freak me out. It, it, it just was something. And I grew up in a family where we were encouraged to talk about our feelings. And um, my dad was a social worker. My mom was a special ed teacher. So, so I really grew up in an environment where we were um, encouraged to just be very real. And I yeah. think that, that helps people feel comfortable um, being vulnerable with me. I just sort of inherited it. When it comes to advice, what do people seek you out for? What so people mean? come to me for concrete, action-oriented advice about how to feel closer, how to feel more connected, and they usually feel misunderstood. Most people's pain and suffering, it's not about high conflict as much. It's not about a fair recovery as much. It's mostly about wanting to feel understood and connected and less alone in the world mm. and wanting to feel liked. So in a primary romantic relationship, many times people feel lonely or things become sort of routine where they feel more like roommates than romantic partners and they just have to-do lists that they tackle together. And most people really want more than that, but don't necessarily know how to turn the ship around. So I help them basically say, what do you do today and tomorrow? What does a Tuesday afternoon look like in your relationship instead of waiting for a romantic, you know, getaway weekend or exotic vacation? Like what can you do in five minutes a day so that you feel more connected and more loved? Keeping that spark, by the sounds of it, yes. keeping that spark lit. Well said, exactly. Yeah, it's it's uh, complacency is the killer, isn't it? The killer of dreams, as they say. It's uh, you get stuck in your routine, and I've had it in relationships where you do. It, it feels like you're sharing, your dwelling with you know, uh, yeah, like a, a a brother or a sister in a sense, you know, like a housemate. You know, like right. you just you've got a relationship, you love each other, but it's not like that in love with each other and the passion and the the spark tends to die off and it, it happens to a lot of people, you know, especially when there's children involved as well and things like that. So it's, right. Um, yeah. Right. And I call it the silent killer of relationships because it's a lot easier to spot when there's a lot of fighting or there's some like very intense betrayal. Mm. But when there's this sort of slow, gradual, emotional disconnection, sometimes people don't notice it. And they kind of look around and they're like, oh, we haven't been making our relationship a priority just because we have kids and jobs and family members and we're and we're putting out fires. So uh, so sometimes they look back and they, and they say, oh, OK, well, I need to kind of put this take it from the back burner and put it front and center. And and the good news about this kind of relationship difficulty is that it's fairly easy to turn around if you've got two people willing to make some changes, some really small, consistent changes. Mm, that's great advice, really interesting stuff. Okay, so technology-wise in the world today, what's making you nervous right now? What's, what's going on in the world of... 
Tech so world. I sometimes worry about what I'm seeing in terms of the rapid the rapid sharing of inaccurate information. Mm. Um, and in my field specifically, it's that there's a lot of posts going viral that are encouraging people to be very afraid of certain very normal behaviors and they leave healthy relationships because they think they're toxic or they think somebody's narcissistic and maybe they are and believe me i am not like there are absolutely many relationships you need to get out of that are unhealthy um but michelle obama has been talking about this a lot on her book tour about how young people it's important for them to understand that relationships are hard and there are going to be you are going to hurt each other's feelings sometimes and mm. sometimes i think people will read a blog post and they'll be like oh no like if i'm true to myself i should like kick this person to the curb mm. um, and maybe the pendulum has gone a little bit too far you know in an opposite direction where in the past i think people would stay in unhealthy relationships for life for a lifetime and i'm glad we're not doing that as much anymore so what are the weak what's one the one weakness you're working to improve on right now so the thing that you'd say is a weakness so i am really right there with everybody else in terms of trying to work like practice what i preach because it's not easy so i feel that i have a wonderful partner in my life and i want to treat him even better i want to have even more self-awareness of the ways that i can be difficult. I, I feel strong emotions. Like I, and that's part of, I think, a blessing and a curse for me, right? It, it's part of who I am is that I can feel things very strongly. And so that helps me empathize with other people. But it also means that I have like a level of reactivity that I've been working on my entire life. And, um, and sometimes I don't do as well as I'd like at containing my irritation. So here I am teaching everybody, you know, how to, how to be better at their relationships. And I try to be really honest about my own struggles. And, you know, I use these tools in my own relationship all the time. I'm married to another couple's therapist. So I don't know, take that for what it is. No, it's you practice what you preach. That's the saying, isn't it? It's, that's, that makes it authentic. That's really good. Yeah. Um, okay, so you have 60 seconds. Teach me in the audience something that will change our lives. Mm, okay, so if you, so love and having a healthy, loving relationship, and this doesn't mean romantic, it could be anybody, a family member, a, um, a friendship, but when we feel loved, we have a better immune system, we have better cardiovascular health, we actually will live longer, and it's the same part of our brain that cocaine brings us pleasure, okay? So having healthy love in your life is going to benefit you, and the best thing that you can do to create that is to actively cherish the love that is in your life. And it's and that has and the the active is the key part. You can't just love people and hope that they know it. It also means expressing it verbally, non-verbally, consistently, even when they they let you down or you're a little annoyed at them. To keep letting them know that you're grateful to have them in your life, um, so that you can continue to both feel um, feel what you deserve, which everybody feels. Everybody deserves love. Okay, so what three words would you want written on your epitaph? Epitaph. Compassionate, uh, generous, and loving. Wonderful. Okay, well, Laura, uh, it's been absolutely wonderful. I do appreciate the time you've spent uh, answering those questions and learning more about you. Thank you very much, and hopefully we'll speak again soon in the future. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a great conversation. Perfect. All right, you take care of yourself. Thanks a lot. Okay, bye-bye.